there you go guys here you got all of your products you have the price you have the link and it's all filtered to the specific search you conducted you got a total of 1680 products hello everyone in today's tutorial we'll dive into building an ebay scraper using python requests and beautiful soup to automate searches and gather product data. We're gonna start by importing our dependencies. We don't have that many this time. Import requests. Also beautiful soup from BS4. Import beautiful soup. Import pandas as pd. We gotta define a base URL. Let's head over to ebay.com and see how the URL is formed. Let me do a quick search. Let's say iPhone 13. That's what I'm looking for. Now we can see here we got a base URL, which is this part before the question mark. And then after the question mark, we got the parameters, which we're gonna be tweaking to get exactly what we need. In my case, I want used products at auction, and I wanna check the prices for completed and sold items. All right, now let's check our URL. We can see here we have a bunch more parameters than we had before. For example, complete, LH underscore complete, LH underscore sold equals one. I want complete items and sold items. LH underscore auction equals one. I want items that are at auction only. Item condition 3000. We can deduct from this that 3000 is the code they use for used item. This part right here is the specific category. I didn't select anything, so it's gonna be zero. Underscore NKW. This is the actual query, the product we're looking for, iPhone 13. And then if we start playing with the parameters on the side here, you're gonna see a bunch of other parameters show up in the URL. So let's say I want only free shipping items. It's gonna update. And then you can see here LH underscore free shipping equals one, added that parameter. I don't wanna spend too long going into everything here because I already did that. You guys can just copy it from the code that's available on the Data Circles GitHub. I've assembled a dictionary and that dictionary contains all of these codes and everything you might need. So first, we're going to define our base URL, the one that comes before the parameters. It's this one right here. Just copy and paste it. URL equals to the base URL. And then all the parameters I just showed you guys. Let's create a dictionary called params. And I'm gonna start typing a few here. This first one, you guys don't really have to worry about. It's the from parameter. In this case, we're just gonna put R40, which means we're coming from the search page. You don't really need to change this one. Now, as we saw the underscore NKW, which stands for the product that we're looking for. NKW for us is gonna be iPhone 13. I'm not gonna type all the parameters here. I'm just gonna copy and paste it. And you guys can do the same. You can get it from the Data Circles GitHub if you're following along. Now, these are all the other parameters that we have here. With these parameters, you can pretty much look for anything you like. You can look for sold products. You can look for products that are still at auction. You can look for buy it now products. So let's take a look at a, a few here. Minimum price, UDLO. UDHI maximum price. This one's for directories, it's a broader category. Categories, which is for specific category. SOP, which is the sort order of the products. These ones, so we gotta create a dictionary. We can translate the codes that eBay uses into our language. So you can see here, I already have dictionaries set up. For this case, I want directories, but I don't want to search any specific directory or categories. I don't want to search any specific category. And here, a sort order, newly listed. Let's go on and create those dictionaries. We can translate the codes that eBay uses into our own language. It makes things easier. Once again, you guys can just copy and paste everything from the data circles GitHub. And these are all the codes we're going to need. So you can see here we got a dictionary for item conditions. New items is a thousand. Used items is 3000 as we just saw in the example I showed you guys just now. Item locations, it depends on where you are. One's gonna stand for domestic. In my case here, it's gonna show the entire US. International is gonna show anywhere. And three, it's gonna be within your own continent. General directories, specific categories. If you set it to zero, there are no directories or no categories and sort order best match which is the one we're currently using actually we're using a newly listed 10 and basically we're translating to our, into our code what the codes mean here we set it to no directory no category newly listed international and then we got the lh parameters i'm looking for sold products lh sold is equals equal one lh complete equal one as well because we want complete sold items and i'm looking for auctions only and then for all of the other parameters i'm going to leave it as zero because these are the ones I want. Whatever you don't want, you leave it as zero. What you want, you leave it as one. 
items per page. This is the maximum number of items you can show per page on eBay, 240, which is gonna make the scraping a lot quicker. And RT, you can always leave it as NC. You don't want cash. You can ensure that the results are always fresh. Now that we have set up our base URL, all of our parameters, our search parameters, we can move on to creating the actual request that's gonna get the HTML from the page. But before we actually make that request, I'm gonna prepare the request so I can check if the URL is being passed correctly. In order to do that, I'm gonna create a variable called request, which is gonna be equal to requests dot request. It's gonna be a get request, which we're gonna pass the URL and the parameters. params equals params. Perfect. So we're gonna prepare the request. We can check the full URL, how it looks. Prepared request. It's gonna be equals to request dot prepare. And then we just want to print it so we can see the URL. So dot URL. Let's check it out. Okay, we need to run this ones first. Let's run here, here. We got the commas here and here. And then let's see how the URL looks like. We can see here our full URL, the base URL, all the parameters from our 40 NKW iPhone 13 item condition 3000. Everything we set up here is going to show up here. It seems like our URL is in order. So now we can copy this URL and paste it into our address bar and see if it returns the results we want. Yes, it seems like everything's in order. We can see here we got used items, auction, completed, sold. Yeah, that's everything we needed. Now, if we scroll down a bit further, we can see we have uh, 240 results per page. Let's initialize our variables. Page number is going to start at zero. And we're going to be creating a list to store all of our items. Items underscore list. And it's an empty list for now. Now we're going to be looping over the pages. We're going to be using a while clause because then we don't have to determine a specific number of pages as it's going to change with each search while true. And we're going to start by with page number one. We're going to, every time our loop runs, it's going to add one to the number of pages plus equals one. And just a quick print statement. We know what's going on. Print, scraping, page, and then page number. And we already set a bunch of parameters, but we need to set one more, which is the page number. Params, we're going to be adding that parameter here equals page number. Now that we have our full request, we can send the get request to eBay to get the HTML. Response equals requests.get and we want the URL which is the base URL with the parameters. Params equals params and then we want to get the HTML content which is going to be equals to the text from the response. Response.text. All right with this we're already getting the HTML we need. Now let's parse the HTML content using beautiful soup. Soup equals beautiful soup. We're gonna pass it the HTML content and we want the HTML parser. Okay, so now we have the first page. We started the page at zero, we're at, we added one. We passed the page number parameter to our full URL. We requested the HTML and we parsed it. Now we have a parsed HTML from page one. Once we have scraped the HTML from a page, we gotta figure out if that was the last page. How are we gonna do that? Here you can see that the next page button is disabled. Let's inspect it and see what changes. This is the button that's not disabled, the previous one. Go to previous page, everything right here. And if we choose the next page button, we can see here we have another parameter called area disabled equals true. That's what we're looking for. Once this is disabled, we know it's the last page. We know we got to stop our scraper. We got to exit our loop. First, let's locate the button. Next button. We're going to be using beautiful soup for that. Soup.find our button. And the class is going to be, let me just double check here. The class is going to be pagination next icon button. Let's use that. So next and the type is going to be next as well. Okay, so we found our button. Now we got to find that label that says that the button is disabled. Let's check if the button is disabled. If next button, that means if it exists and next underscore button dot get area disabled. If these two are true, then we know it's the last page. We're just going to print no more pages to scrape and we're going to break out of the loop. But if that's not the case, then we want to start extracting our items. We want to keep extracting our items, right? So we're going to be using beautiful soup for that. Items equals soup find all. Now let's see what divs our items are in. Let's check it out. Let's look at our items here. It seems like 
there's a list item and then we have this div right here which has all of the information this is the one we need the s item wrapper clear fix it's a div with the class s item wrapper clear fix those are our items we want to get all of those and then for each one we want to extract title price link and the image url so let's first start by extracting each one of them for item in items and you guys gotta trust me that you gotta start at the third item because the first and the second aren't exactly items they are ebay divs but for some reason they have the same name if you add the two here you're gonna start by the third item on every page which is the first actual item you want just set it to two now we want the title we want the price we want the link and we want the image url and for those, we're gonna do item.find. We're gonna be looking for these elements inside each item. And we want the text. I'm just gonna copy and paste this here. And then for the links, it's gonna be a bit different. For this two, we want the text. But here we can also use item.find in here as well. Now let's see which element our title is inside of. Let's head back to eBay. Let's click our title here. And we have our div class as item title. This is the one we want. Let's go back here. We know it's a div, a div class as item title. We want the text from that. Now let's look at the price. We got a div called as item price class equals as item price. Now let's look for our URL, the item URL, the item link. We can see here we got an A tag. And inside that a tag, we got a class s system s item link, and then the age ref. That's what we want. Let's copy this. So s item link, and we want the age ref parameter from in there. And one more thing, we can see here we got quite a long URL. We're not really interested in whatever comes after the question mark. The parameters here. These are the ones we set, and they don't really matter to us right now. I'm only gonna get the URL up to the question mark. Basically, the base URL plus the item code. And in order to do that, we're gonna split it. We're gonna do dot split, and we want to get split it by the question mark at the question mark, and we want the first part of it. We want zero here. And that's how we get our URL. And then for the image URL, let's check it out. Let's see our image here. It's inside this S item image wrapper. That's where we're gonna look for. Let's just copy this. It's a div. And then it's inside an IMG tag. And we want the SRC from it. Let's let's do this. We want the div class equals s item image wrapper. Then we're looking for find the IMG tag and we want to get the src or else just say no image url all right now that we're getting all the data we need we can add all of the data to a dictionary let's create the item dict inside that we're going to have title which is going to be equal to title we're going to have price going to be price we're going to have link link which is the url and then we want the image link the image url and then after we get that for each product, we're going to append it to the items list, which we created outside the loop. Items list dot append item dict. So we're going to have a list of dictionaries that we can then convert it into a pandas data frame. Now that's all we needed. Let's see if our scraper is working. Let's run it. Okay, it seems like we got a small error here. Just forgot. Just forgot the quotes here. Let's see. Let's try and run it again. When we're looking for our name here, just the equal sign. Seems like our indentation is not correct. Let's check it out. All right, now let's check it out. We start scraping, scraping page one. This one is not actually an, a div, it's a span. My bad. Oh, here, I just forgot it's a double underscore here. Let's run it. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this video. Uh, if you are, please consider subscribing to the Leader Circle and becoming a part of our community because we got tons more content just like this one coming up in the future. And now let's get back to it. And remember, we have a total of eight pages. Let's see if our scraper stops after page number eight. Perfect. You can see here we scraped eight pages and then no more pages to scrape. Now let's see our item list and see if everything's in order. Perfect. You can see here we got the title, got the price. We got the link and we got the image link. Everything seems to be in order. Let's see how many products we got. We got a total of 1,680 products. Now what I wanna do, I wanna turn that into a pandas data frame. We can further clean our data and organize it. Let's create items DF, which is gonna be PD data frame items list. Let's check out our items DF. There you go, much better. Now, in my particular search, I'm looking for iPhone 13s, not 13 Pros or Pro Maxes or Minis 
I want to specify that and I want to remove the ones that don't correspond to my exact search. So I'm going to create a, a small list called forbidden terms and we're going to set it up so that any listing that contains a term in that list is going to be removed from our data frame. Let's create that list forbidden terms and let's set a couple of things. I already have everything I don't want right here. You guys can set up your own terms based on your search. I don't want any refurbished. I don't want any iPhone that's for parts, damaged, locked. I don't want pros, I don't want minis. And in my particular case, I only want 128 GB versions. I don't want any 256 or 512. Also, I don't want any locked phones. That's why I said that if any of these carriers are in the title, don't keep it. And also read description because as some of you might know whenever that's written, it means there's an issue with the product and I only want good phones that are ready to go. One more thing I see here that it shows us an iPhone 12. I also, I don't want that either. Let's add that to our list, iPhone 12, and that should do it. Let's load our list into our memory. And in order to remove the listings that contain any of those words, I'm going to create a mask. Let's create a mask. And this mask is going to be an inverted query pretty much whenever this search returns true for one of those words it's going to be false and if it's false it doesn't have any of those words it's going to be true and that's going to make sense in just a moment let's do items df title and we also we want to do dot lower because we don't want our mask to be case sensitive string dot contains and in here we're going to be creating a regular expression that combines all of these words that's why the join here join forbidden terms i'm going to be separating them with this and this means boundaries it means i only want the full terms let's say i write locked here i don't want it to remove any listing that says unlocked but unlocked contains the word locked inside of it so that's why i set the boundaries here i'm only removing listings that have the word locked and not the word unlocked now we're going to be applying that mask to our data frame items df mask that's why we use it this here whenever it finds a term it's going to be true but then this is going to set it to false and the opposite is also true here it's only going to keep the true ones let's create a filter df and then i also want to reset the index because we removed a bunch of entries let's do future df dot reset index and we're going to be dropping drop equals true all right let's apply our mask this is items df okay it seems like uh, we just forgot a t here for title let's run it all right so it seems like we applied our mask let's see what our filtered df looks like okay 640 rows you can see here i only have iphone 13 no pros no maxes no minis and only 128 gigabyte versions and all unlocked as well no carrier lock now last thing you gotta do is save it to a csv we can open it with excel or google sheets let's do that right now filtered score df to csv let's just give our file a name let's say iphone 13 128 csv and we don't want the index index equals false all right now let's open it there you go guys here you got all of your products 640 products in total you have the price you have the link and it's all filtered to the specific search you conducted i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please consider subscribing also don't forget to follow us on instagram at the data i'll see you guys in the next one